been having a lot of great conversations today, hearing some great speeches, and I was just explaining, I've never heard Lucian, and I really want to sit down and hear Lucian, but just want to let you know this one fine point. He tells me to let you know he is the most awesome speaker ever, and um, if he is anywhere as good on this stage as I know he's going to be, um, we're going to learn a lot, have a lot of fun, and please give us some ideas for how we can do the same thing and make the religious people who want to tell us we can't be in spaces um, run screaming the way they do when they hear your voice. Lucian Greaves, thank you so much. Hello, I'm Lucian Greaves, and I'm an internationally recognized religious figurehead. If you look me up and you look up some of the interviews and exp expositions written about uh, people trying to make sense of what we're doing and what we actually believe, you'll often find reference to an interview I did in Vice where the question was, is the Satanic Temple a satanic or satirical group? And I said, that is a common question. I say, why can't it be both? And usually they use this line to show that we don't actually have any sincerity about us at all that um, this is all one big prank, a hoax, and that uh, uh, the Satanism component doesn't mean anything to us at all. And I think it comforts a lot of people in this room to also think that as well. But as a matter of fact, there's nothing disingenuous in what we're doing. Um, the values we put forward are values we absolutely adhere to. We're very uh, clear at the fact that we're atheistic and that we feel that religion and supernaturalism can be separated from one another, and we feel that it only benefits us as non-believers that it is separated. Usually when worse comes to worse, when you're arguing with, uh, with the theistic crowd, they're going to hide the, uh, the superstition of their religion behind uh, the components that we feel are completely legitimate, the cultural identity, the symbolic structure, the narrative construct that gives people a sense of meaning. Um, CBS in Miami went ahead and said, the group's name, the Satanic Temple, is simply to draw attention to its efforts. And one of the worst was Tucker Carlson on Fox News talking about uh, an incident where we actually got a Satanic holiday display to place in, in Florida. And, yeah. A lot of people were upset about that, but Tucker Carlson took to the air and said uh, to his guest, so I'm assuming that there aren't a ton of Satanists in Tallahassee. I'm assuming there really aren't any at all. And this is purely an attempt to stick a finger in the eye of Christians in Florida. Is that correct? And you'd wonder who he's asking this question to. Surely it should be uh, a spokesperson for the Satanic Temple. But no, it was a pastor, um, a Christian pastor named Derek McGee, who also took it upon himself to elaborate on, on exactly where the Satanic Temple was coming from. And he said, that would be correct, Tucker. It is definitely a ploy and a scheme and a mockery of those of us who are believers in Christ Jesus. Anyways, they don't go on uh, to quote the full, uh, the full answer I gave to Vice. I said, this is a common question. I say, why can't it be both? And then I continued to elaborate. We are coming from a solid philosophy that we absolutely believe in and adhere to. This is Satanism, and to us it couldn't be called anything other than Satanism. However, our metaphor of Satan is a literary construct inspired by authors such as Anatole France and Milton, a rebel angel defiant of autocratic structure and concerned with the material world. Satanism as a rejection of superstitious supernaturalism. This Satan, of course, bears no resemblance to the embodiment of all cruelty, suffering, and negativity believed by some apocalyptic segments of the Judeo-Christian culture. The word Satan has no inherent value. If one acts with compassion in the name of Satan, one is still acted with compassion. Our very presence as civic-minded, socially responsible Satanists serves to satirize the ludicrous superstitious fears that the word Satan tends to evoke. And that's how we see it. And it, whereas the word Satan may have no inherent value, um, it has a lot of cultural value. And that means a lot to certain people when they're coming out of their religion, um, usually at a young age, and they embrace blasphemy. And for lack of a better word, that becomes a, a transcendent, rather religious, spiritual experience of, of, of its own. And they, they embrace that outsider status, and they embrace the the heresy, this kind of lineage of heresy from which the symbolism and idea of Satanism was derived from the outsiders, the outcasts who've been 
burned, beaten, and turned into pariahs, we feel it's somewhat our duty to take on that name and, and, uh, and take away this idea that anything that opposes the supernatural, moralistic, uh, so-called majority must necessarily be entirely evil. Satanism accurately suggests that we genuinely do not give a shit if our values contradict the archaic Levitican laws or whatever else. So that comes into play when we uh, argue for atheistic religion, of course, and, uh, and we started pushing forward uh, the rights for such. And you, you may be aware of our monument campaign in Oklahoma. That was the first thing where... That was the first thing where we really started getting major press. In, in 2009, a Baptist minister who was also in the legislature in Oklahoma, Mike Ritz, uh, pushed forward a bill that in part said, uh, and it, it, it went through with bipartisan support, so there's, there's plenty of politicians in, in both, uh, there's plenty of part, politicians in both parties that don't deserve to be in, in office, the way I see it. But it has this whole revisionist history about the Ten Commandments that says that God has ordained civil government and has de delegated limited authority to civil government, and God himself limited the authority of civil government, and God uh, apparently had nothing to say about the Establishment Clause. It goes on to say that, <laughs> that Oklahomans must understand this, and they understand the, uh, the general uh, generation of, of constitutional law if they understand the Ten Commandments. So we came up, we felt, with a, an argument. If they were going to take that broad view of constitutional law and say that just because the Ten Commandments are old laws, they, uh, they form the basis of the Constitution, or at least help in part, even though you have counter-constitutional claims within the Ten Commandments themselves, such as thou shalt have no God before me, or you know, thou shalt keep the Sabbath holy, or not worship graven idols then we thought we could also take a broad view of uh, the formation of law and say that the, the witch hunts, um, they, they helped us uh, develop standards for secular law, uh, standards such as the accuser's burden of proof and, and respect for material evidence, innocence until proven guilty, and that our monument would stand um, in honor of the unjustly accused, our outcasts, our minorities, and that type of thing. Um, this has all been written about, and there's limited time. Um, sometimes the, the, our opposition gets it right. Um, recently, there's an article online, Seven Satanic Strategies to Distract from Christianity, on, uh, on some a Christian website, I forget the one now. But um, they were all fairly accurate. Um, one of them says, you lead man to think science provides all the answers, and this includes a rejection of Satan, angels, miracles, and even God himself. And this, this was something that this guy was attributing to say. I don't know if he was uh, inspired by the Satanic Temple, but I, I appreciated it. <laughs> this gets it right. Um, Satan was the first to demand equal rights. And that's, that's really, uh, you know, dis despite these types of revisionist histories we get from the, the Christian camps, um, it's, it, the mainstream monotheistic religions haven't been very good for their minorities or, or their they're outsiders or, or embracing them. And, you know, you, you hear this rhetoric saying that individual rights were respected because of, the, because of Christianity and that kind of thing. That's, that's all bullshit. And you see that most clearly with the gay rights movement um, today and the pushback from the Christians. And, but you can be rest assured that in another 50 years or even less, they'll be crediting themselves for, for that very, um, for those, these very advances we make in the... Uh, in the rights movement, and it's the same with civil rights, uh, slaves, and slaves were often Satanized, Jews, that type of thing. And we feel that um, we don't want that to happen. We don't want that revisionism to stand, and not just to rub their noses in their own history, but to maybe give people pause to think that maybe they really don't have the moral high ground today. Jefferson wrote, all men shall be free to profess and by argument to maintain their opinions in matters of religion and the same shall in no wise diminish, enlarge, or affect their civil capacities. He wrote this in the statute, Virginia for Religious Freedom. And um, he went on to elaborate in his memoirs that this was meant to uh, protect the opinion 
uh, universally opinions within the mantle of its protection, the Jew, the Gentile, the Christian, the Mahometan, the Hindu, and infidel of every denomination. So it is clear that he was talking about religious opinion, and it's interesting that he used the word infidel. So when you reject the word religion and you insist that it have this component of supernaturalism be defined as religion, I think that is in, so very wrong and so very hurtful to non-believers themselves because we give privilege and exemption to religions. And if you insist that that's, that requires superstition, you're conceding privilege and exemptions to the superstitious in saying that your values are, are less deeply held, perhaps, because they weren't, uh, they weren't dictated to you by some dictator in the sky. We have our tenants. I could read them to you, but you can look them up. And speaking of the whole gay rights thing, we, we did a, a uh, pink mask, which kind of muddied the waters a little bit for us when we, uh, we took to uh, Fred Phelps's mother's grave in Mississippi and did a homoerotic ritual over the grave. And I, I was still getting my stride with the media, so um, I, didn't, I, I didn't quite realize to what extent they wouldn't use my full words, but I was very clear that we don't believe in the supernatural, and we didn't actually believe, as we had said, that we had converted his mother into a lesbian in the afterlife. <laughs> but that we actually felt that due to their beliefs, uh, they were obligated to believe that she was a lesbian in the afterlife due to what we had done. And nothing they could say could change that because our belief was inviolable, just as theirs is. They make that argument. And is. So anyways. I wanted to show you a clip of some of the reaction we've gotten from the, or had gotten from the monument campaign to see just how, how uh, this sparks debate and controversy if you weren't aware of it before. So, okay, Bruce, roll one. Don't put Satan on the front steps of our Capitol. Here it is, the devil in the image of a goat, the image that has Oklahoma voters getting vocal. It's kind of freaky. I think it's a little bit funny. Comical to some that the Satanic Temple wants their monument to go right next to the Ten Commandments statue. The Satanist group says the placement will show Oklahoma accepts all religions. But let's be absolutely emphatic. This is ridiculous. It's not just that it's a mockery. It actually demeans America. It has to be equal representation of every, every belief. You know, as long as they don't infringe on mine, I don't want to infringe on theirs. The satanic sculpture is almost complete. And it could be going outside the Oklahoma State House. Satanists raised money for the sculpture after a monument of the Ten Commandments went up. I think this might be just plain evil. It's a statue of the devil, and you think it might be just plain evil? <laughs> That's like saying you think the tall guy sitting in the chair in the memorial might be just plain Lincoln. I think Oklahoma is becoming more of a progressive state. I think it could definitely happen. This is kind of what America was based on, freedom of religion. And for us to say, whether you believe in it or not, that it shouldn't be there is kind of wrong. But many say the statue goes against core Oklahoman beliefs. Of having little kids around it, uh, that's just ridiculous. I mean, I don't, I don't understand where they come from. Our whole judicial system is based on the Ten Commandments. Whether, whether you like it or not, it's our judicial system. Making a moral equivalence between, uh, say, Christianity, which <laughs> promotes things good for the most part, and, and all other religions, and Satanism, which, which is, is, promotes evil. Not, and, not a good role model. So they, yeah. should they, be, they should be able to put the statue up, and then they should be shot right next to it, and then we take it down. Yeah. Are you kidding me now? Are we making a mockery of everything with regard to Christianity in this society? Now we're going to have a satanic monument next to the Ten Commandments, really? A satanic group has designs for a seven-foot statue of Satan that they want placed on the steps of the Oklahoma Capitol. It's not going over so well in the Sooner State, sometimes called the buckle of the Bible belt. But the spokesperson for the satanic temple argues that the Ten Commandments placed on the Capitol steps in 2012 opened the door for their statue. State Rep. Paul Wesselhoff argues that the Ten Commandments monument is different because of its historical significance. We believe that we don't believe that people should be uh, stealing from people, and so we uh, we enforce those kinds of laws, and uh, that's what we do as lawmakers. Absolutely. But as a representative in Oklahoma, you re you represent Oklahoman Hindus, Jews, Buddhists, Muslims, as well as Christians. 
and even Satanists insofar as you should maintain an environment in which each of these groups are treated with equal respect in the eyes of the law. If you don't understand that basic premise of holding public office, you have no business doing so. Well, that's your opinion. Uh, I have my own. Absolutely. Not mockery, not ridiculous. It's a separation of church and state is what makes America great. Religious freedom means the government doesn't take sides, one religion or another. You may not like the Satanists. Guess what? That doesn't matter. The Satanists came along and said, hey, well, if you get your Ten Commandments statue or monument, we get our Satanist monument. To me, Satan is not a religion. They may say, yes, it is, but... That's not what this nation was built on. By the word religion in the First Amendment, the founders meant Christianity. It's like they went to the, to the craziest group they could find. No offense. So I was asking yesterday, somebody I ran into, if they thought maybe I was the beneficiary of low expectations because uh, when I first started doing interviews, when the monument things first started picking up, I was uh, invited to debate a lot of politicians, and after a few appearances, uh, they all backed out. And <laughs> And I thought, maybe I didn't do that great, but I did well enough. And they had to figure that if they were going to argue with the Satanist in front of their constituents, they better do very, very well, because breaking even wasn't even going to cut it. <laughs> and uh, it's funny to see uh, just how this undermines their typical arguments, too. Um, and no nobody really knows how to, how to take this on. Uh, the religious right likes to think they have the constitutional high ground, and when they're arguing for religious rights and religious liberty, um, they're usually thinking that there's only one game in town and nobody else is going to come in and assert the same rights. So this is where you see this kind of cognitive dissonance that they haven't really worked through. And um, I, I'm sometimes amazed that they take on the topic at all when they haven't thought it through. Well, I guess I shouldn't be amazed with Glenn Beck. He was on with... Uh, his sidekick, and they were set talking with each other and um, deciding that the Satanic Temple had no place to be displayed with the holiday display fiasco in Florida. And they concluded that this is because we simply don't have the right. And that was it. <laughs> what was interesting about the rabbi also in that clip was he said that if the Satanists could find one founding father who was, uh, who was a Satanist, maybe we'd have a case. Nobody mentioned that there weren't any Jews. <laughs> he also went on to say that, what's next? Are we going to slaughter goats in the public square? And there again, I wondered, had he not read the Old Testament? <laughs> so nobody quite knows how to handle it, but um, we're fighting for uh, you know, viewpoint neutrality, legal equality, and we're really exposing the hypocrisy, I think, of the, the little tribal panders we now have in, in political office who have gotten uh, quite frightening. Um, we've, we absolutely do have the constitutional high ground, and we feel that anything they apply to us, they're going to have to apply universally. So when we get these questions about our sincerity and people asking, well, you know, since you don't actually believe in a personal Satan, how can you be a Satanist? I think we're, we're quite at ease with any of this also being applied to Christians. Um, what, what is going to be the, the litmus test for if a Christian is allowed to engage in RIFRA to, uh, to deny homosexuals? Uh, I know the big fear is that some hypothetical baker somewhere is going to have to make a gay cake that's going to corrupt his spirit in some way. This is always the, the uh, scenario they come up with. But are we going to start taking measure of how often they go to church? How literally do they take the Bible? And I say that's all fine and good, and I'm glad that dialogue is coming up, and, um, and I'm glad that people are asking this of us because it must also be asked of them. In, in a perfect world, uh, sometimes we see it doesn't work out uh, fairly at all. Um, in Florida, we had a holiday display put up, and a woman in a Catholic warrior T-shirt came marching in and tore it down. And prosecutors dropped all charges against her and said they couldn't, they couldn't see discernible damage on the display. They didn't think there was a real monetary amount to put to it. And later I opinionated in a column I have that I guess this is a carte blanche to walk into the Florida Capitol and rehang paintings upside down and put potted plants into the doorway and overturn the trash bins or whatever else. But uh, one big success we had, and, and it 
uh, the Freedom from Religion Foundation, America's United for the Separation of Church and State, and the ACLU have uh, really woken up to how useful we can be. And um, in Florida, there was an organization called the uh, World Changers who were passing out evangelical materials in, in, in a so-called open forum to the children in the schools. Oh, well, here's some images of them. I always get caught up in other things. But this is what the monument's going to look like, to backtrack a bit. Here's, here's a bronze bust of it. Actually, the monument is completed, but we're kind of waiting to release the completed images when we file the lawsuit, actually, against Oklahoma because they haven't replied to our request to place it there. And we're doing that probably within the next month or two, pretty soon, as soon as the lawyer says the time has passed. <laughs> yes, but with the, uh, with the Florida thing, uh, the Friendly Atheist blog had coined a term from David Williamson that... Uh, uh, Central Florida free thought communities had who said that the, that he dubbed us the nuclear option. He came up with Lucian's law that when nothing else works, count on the Satanists to settle the matter, because they had been fighting this evangelical material being in the schools for some three years, I think it was, in telling the uh, the director of the the school board and that kind of thing that this was unconstitutional, and um, the Freedom from Religion Foundation wanted to put out their atheist material. The school said it was um, disruptive. Oh, there's a picture of my cat looking at a squirrel. <laughs> and this was part of the, uh, the FFRF material that they were putting out in the school. The school originally said it was disruptive and it was insulting and they couldn't do it. FFRF filed a lawsuit. The school board backed down and said, okay, you can distribute your material too. But then we came in, and it became a whole different story entirely then. And um, what was funny is we were being advised from some of the uh, secular advocates. We were told, you can be critical in your material. This is an open forum, and, and you can be critical of, of, of the Bible. You can be critical of stories of Jesus. And I was saying, well, that's not really our thing. You know, we, we, we put forward affirmative values, and it's very hard for them to fight that. We, we never really come out and attack them, and I think that's important. Um, you know, so often in, in the secular atheist fight, it's usually just against one, you know, one thing. And, and, you know, we come along and say we have these same rights, too, and they work uh, to advance our values as well. It's, it's really difficult for them to say anything about it. So we put out something that was completely unimpeachable. And, um, <laughs> and you, we knew this was exactly what they did not want. Because as soon as we mentioned that we were going to apply to uh, hand out satanic literature at the schools, the, um, the, the school board was being hit with all this press. And they were trying to make it sound as though they were the arbiters of what could be distributed and what couldn't be. And they reserved the right to not approve material. And I, we felt that was only true uh, to a certain point. We felt if it was truly vulgar or pornographic, they could cite community standards and say that that, that couldn't be distributed at the schools. That could be disruptive or whatever. But simply uh, saying we couldn't distribute it because it was satanic wouldn't be legally viable for them. So the Satanic Children's Big Book of Activities really doesn't have any philosophical content in it. It really is just a, just a cute little activity book um, with Satanic symbols in it and, and Satanic references. <laughs> like this... Uh, it's an admittedly easy connect the dots. But you, you'll get to see in the video clip somebody actually doing it if you don't see the picture immediately. Okay, Bruce. Roll two. Satanic children's coloring book is creating controversy in Orlando, but if you read between the lines, the issue is a lot deeper than black and white. The Orange County School Board is considering changing its police regarding religious materials after a group of local Satanists asked to hand out a Satanic-themed coloring book. The request is in response to the board allowing other religion, religious groups, that is, to leave Bibles and booklets for students. Public education in America often uses coloring books to teach young Americans about math, science, and current events. This year, a new book filled with games and lessons about Satanism could be distributed to students attending public school in Florida's Orange County. 
The 10-page Satanic Children's Big Book of Activities features characters named Annabelle and Damien who demonstrate rituals to explain Satanism. This expanding wealth of information for America's young minds was made possible after a Florida judge last month ruled that if the Orange County School District allowed Christian groups to disseminate Bibles and other materials in its schools, then other religious and atheist groups should be given the same right to distribute their material. And followers of the Antichrist seized on the decision to treat all faiths equally. A spokesman for the Satanic Temple tells Raw Story that, quote, if a public school board is going to allow religious pamphlets and full Bibles to be distributed to students, as is the case in Orange County, Florida, we think the responsible thing to do is to ensure that these students are given access to a variety of different religious opinions, as opposed to standing idly by while one religious voice dominates the discourse and delivers propaganda to youth, unquote. Bible distributions are, are a good thing. Uh, they haven't caused any problems. Uh, they've, they've gone on without incident. Uh, but now by creating controversy, uh, this group is, is maybe perhaps getting what it wants. In my office alone, I received close to 11,000 emails in one 48-hour period on this issue. And it gives you an idea of the level of disruption that it was causing. A spokesperson for the Satanic Temple says it's laughable that religious groups think that the inability to distribute their materials exclusively is discriminatory against them. I think if you're going to put our material juxtaposed to the standard material, you're going to find that Satan is wildly popular with the kids. In a ruling that was aimed at maintaining religious neutrality, students who may never have intended to learn about Christianity, atheism, or Satanism will now receive an introduction to all three. I really did want to introduce that fear to them that our material would be wildly popular as opposed to the material they were already familiar with. Those kids were probably already have been uh, force-fed Jesus from day one, and they're going to be very curious regarding the controversy of the satanic material, and I thought it would be... Uh, uh, it would be wildly popular with the kids. But we never did get to find out. Um, all of a sudden, uh, it was really funny that the same, uh, the same chairman there who had been um, arguing against the, who couldn't hear the reason being put forward by the Freedom From Religion Foundation and other secular groups, was then saying the exact same things that they were saying against us, saying that religious teachings are probably best left to the home, the church, and that, <laughs> that kind of thing after three years. But we never did get a chance to distribute our materials after three years of the evangelicals, um, uh, you know, distributing their materials. So is it really a victory? We see there is a bit of a, bit of a, a bias there and, and, you know. It is, a victory. Yes. It, is, it is a victory, but still we shouldn't underplay the hypocrisy there. It's, um, it never was a truly open forum. And um, after a certain point, I feel like these people are really going to have to consider when they open up a forum like this whether they truly mean it or not. We see in Arkansas some uh, little shit is putting forward a, a bill uh, identical just about. It seems like he took the, uh, the wording almost exact from the Oklahoma bill for a Ten Commandments monument, and he's pushing it forward in, in Arkansas. And um, it, with absolutely no... Uh, no indication, apparently, that we might come in and do the same. And, um, <laughs> but he, he, he seems to honestly feel that the, uh, the Ten Commandments have this unique place in American history and even Arkansas history in the argument they made for Oklahoma. And, but I think Husby will be talking more about that on, uh, on Sunday. You should go see him. But um, Aside from just putting forward, uh, uh, asking for equal time in a way that makes them reconsider uh, their policies at all, we offer exemptions as well. Um, one of our tenants state that the body is inviolable, subject to one's own will alone, and uh, another tenant states that to our beliefs should, can, you know, should assimilate scientific fact the best it can. We shouldn't, uh, we shouldn't try to assimilate scientific fact into our beliefs in a way that contorts it. And, so in that, on those grounds, we felt that um, a kid who believes in those beliefs should be able to exempt himself from uh, being beaten in school. There's still 19 states that allow schools to beat kids, and we feel that's a violation of personal sovereignty, which we hold sacred.
On those same grounds, we offer an exemption for, um, for women against uh, uh, anti-abortion regulations, such as informed consent, uh, which is really unscientific literature, or, you know, or narrated ultrasounds, that kind of thing that's really meant to dissuade them. Um, they are given unempirical uh, evidence that uh, abortions cause breast cancer, or that they'll commit suicide, or all other kinds of deplorable priming that they put on them, and we feel that with this exemption form, they should be exempted from that kind of material. And with uh, the the recent uh, recent who, uh, hubbub, whatever, of uh, RIFRA, we feel that um, if we were to open an abortion clinic, we should be exempted from all of those superfluous standards as well. And that is actually something we are going to look to do. So that's all I have time for, but we are Satanists and we are your friends. Thank you. Uh, I, I think I found a church or a temple or at least some statues.